The suspicion that NATO wasn't serious about arrests grew with reports that Karadzic was passing through checkpoints unhindered. We are looking into this and we're trying to find out exactly what happened, but no, we have no evidence that he did. All right, the, the photo is uh, very poor. I can give them a much better photo. <laughs> While Karadzic laughed, prosecutors at The Hague grew frustrated. But America wanted no casualties, and the Pentagon held to its position. Um, from the very beginning, we've said that our troops are not going there to be policemen. They're not going there to search out war criminals, and they're not. If you're going to send troops to operate in a theater that is very volatile, and you make it known right from the beginning that you can't take a casualty, I think you become a, a prisoner of a policy that makes you profoundly ineffective. They are not uh, capable of doing that without terrible losses on both sides. 1996. Karadzic was still free, living at home in Pale. According to the peace agreement, he was barred from public office. But in Republika Srpska, the part of Bosnia controlled by Serbs, he wasted few opportunities to prove that his show would go on just as long as he wanted. Right now there's a perception that you can hide in Pali. And there are other war criminals out there who are all kind of saying, well, as long as they don't get him, they're not going to come after me. No matter what we do, the notion that there are war criminals that the international community has not arrested uh, sends a cold chill through the body politic. With elections coming in the fall of 1996, the international community finally demanded that Serbian President Milosevic force Karadzic to bow to the inevitable. He agreed to step down from public life. Dr. Karadzic states, and I quote, that he shall withdraw immediately and permanently from all political activities. He will not appear in public or on radio or television or the other media or means of communication or participate in any way in the elections. And I want to stress he knew what he was signing. He knew he was signing the end of his political career. He had no intention, of course, of a final farewell. Karadzic still controlled the police, the media, and vast revenues from monopolies on oil and cigarettes. <laughs> Miljana Plavsic became the new president of Republika Srpska. During the war, she had been a hardline nationalist. Now, she was an obvious puppet. As someone said, Karadzic in a skirt. She was elected by Radovan's wish, and I must say that we, as Radovan's friends, were for her. When he consulted us, we agreed that she should be president of Republika Srpska. We were all for it. She didn't disappoint him. Emotionally speaking, she killed him because Radovan believed that anyone else would be weaker. He believed in Biliana's strength. No one resists time. Time damages everything. Time damaged Biliana also. She is not the start of Radovan's catastrophe. She is simply the introduction to the Serb catastrophe. 